Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. What you're seeing on screen right now is Forza Horizon 5 running at 1440p high settings with no FSR. So we're at a true 1440p. And what makes this really impressive is it's running on an iGPU. What I've got here is the new B-Link SER9. I did a first look video. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link in the description. But since then, I've been doing some tweaking with this little mini PC, and I've actually managed to overclock the RAM, iGPU, and throw some more wattage at this chip. It's a great performer, like it is, out of the box, and it really comes down to the APU they opted to use here. It's got the new AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370. 12 cores, 24 threads, based on Zen 5. Awesome CPU performance, but the biggest upgrade, in my opinion, is the new iGPU. It's got the Radeon 890M based on RDNA 3.5, and instead of having up to around 12 CUs like the older Radeon 780M did, we've got 16 compute units with the 890M. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at some gaming on this overclock Ryzen AI 9 HX370. I'll show you exactly what I did here with the B-Link SER9 and the HX370, but keep in mind this is not recommended by the manufacturer. It probably voids your warranty. So I'm doing this at my own risk. From the BIOS, went over to Advanced, AMD, CBS, just kind of taking a look at everything. And the first thing I actually found was the LP DDR options. So from here, this is great because uh, we can overclock a bit. We can actually take the RAM speed up from 7,500 megahertz. This has LP DDR5X up to 8,000. So we've got a 500 megahertz boost there on that RAM speed, which is gonna help out with that GPU. But the next thing I did was head back to Advanced, AMD overclocking. And from Precision Boost Override, we've actually got our max GPU boost clock override. Stock iGPU clock on a HX370 is 2900 megahertz, so with a 200 megahertz boost up to 3100. Not too bad. And that's all I did here from the BIOS. There's actually no way that I found so far to kind of up the TDP from here, but I did use a third party app inside of Windows. And just to give you an idea about the TDP on this SER9 B-Link Mini PC, with the uh, Ryzen AI 9 HX370, it's around 54 watts. Got to boost up to around 65 every once in a while. But what I like to use is a third-party application known as x86 Tuning Utility. And I've already got an 89-watt profile loaded here. If we check out CPU-Z, run a stress test right down here you'll see it jump up to around 89 watts. And of course, this is overkill for a mobile APU like this. It's not going to be using 89 watts all the time while we're gaming. But, you know, with some of the harder to run games, I have seen this use 75 watts across the board. So it does need to power that iGPU, 12 cores, and 24 threads. And just checking out Furmark, you can see that our iGPU clock is right there at 31. But yeah, we've got the 890M overclocked here, and we've got that wattage way up. And I'll tell you, with this HX370 in a laptop, even at around 30 watts, it's an awesome performer. But like this, it really does unlock it. First thing I wanted to show you were just a couple benchmarks, then we'll get right into some gaming. Geekbench 6, single core, 2,846, multi, 15,758. Not a huge jump from what I've tested before with higher TDPs. Really, with Geekbench 6, I saw it hit a maximum of 64 watts, and I've been able to do that kind of wattage in a laptop with this chip. I also ran the OpenCL GPU benchmark with Geekbench, 45,505, and taking a look at their browser, we're on par with something like the RX 590 or even the RTX 3050 4 gig laptop variant, which is really impressive given that these are integrated graphics. And the final thing I ran here was 3D Mark Time Spy, 3,436. This is the highest score that I've seen with Time Spy on an iGPU so far. And of course, in a few months, we'll have something more powerful. But right now, this 890M is definitely taking the cake. But these are synthetics. Now it's time to check out some real world gaming. Starting out here with Cyberpunk 2077, we're at 1080p high settings and FSR 3 frame gen is on. So some people might consider frame gen cheating, but if it's in the game, we might as well utilize it with these integrated graphics. And now, instead of running this at low around 78 FPS on average, we're up in the 90s at high settings and it does look great. Next up, Red Dead 2 1080 with a low high mix. So I'm five clicks up on the uh, settings bar, 
hate the way they got it set up. FSR is set to balanced. We're seeing an average of around 74. We could definitely tweak and tune these settings here to kind of get better quality if you wanted to. Maybe even just take FSR to quality, but it's very playable like this. Starfield is another one I want to test here because it always gives us issues on these iGPUs. I'm at 1080p medium settings with frame gen. So on this HX 370, it's not too bad. And we're in the city right now. So we know that, you know, in these cityscapes in Starfield, it really takes a toll on that CPU and GPU. Planet exploration or even indoors, we're up in the low 80s on average. Overwatch 2, 1080, high settings, 100% scale, we're not using FSR, and it really felt like something was holding this game back from getting in higher frame rate. I went through the settings several times just to see what was going on. I did have an unlocked frame rate. Either way, I mean, it did pretty decent. I think there's more that we could get out of this, though. If you take a look at our TDP, we're up to 75 watts here, and remember, we've got this set to a maximum of 89. Ten eighty high FSR three point one frame gen on with this on the seven eighty M same kind of settings here except ten eighty medium with frame gen we're seeing the same kind of frame rate here but with the eight ninety M I GPU we can take these settings up to high and this game is absolutely beautiful. Ratchet and Clank ripped apart 1080p medium settings with FSR set to balance. We're seeing an average of around 86 FPS out of this, and it does play really well on the 890M. Uh, if you try this on an iGPU, you'd be surprised at how hard it is to run on some of the lower end stuff. I know it's just a Ratchet and Clank game, but when they ported this over to PC, I was really surprised at what you needed to run this at, at fully maxed out settings. Here's Shadow of the Tomb Raider using the built-in benchmark, 1080 medium, no scaling. With these iGPUs, we've really been trying to break 60 with it, and with the 890M, a little bit of an overclock there on the RAM and the GPU side, we're still not quite there. We got an average of 59 FPS. I also tested out Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, 1080 ultra settings with FSR set to balanced. By the end of this, I was pretty impressed. Usually I have to go to balance preset there, but at that ultra preset, we had an average of 122 and our 1% low was only 58. And finally, Forza Horizon 5. I know that this is a very well optimized game, but to see it run this well at 1440p on an iGPU is still really impressive. So we're at 1440, no scaling. So I'm not using XESS, no cast, no FSR. Graphics are at full high right now. We'll get into some gameplay, and you'll see this runs like butter on this 890MI GPU at 1440p. And I'm sure if we went into something like Skyrim or even Fallout 4, we could get up to 1440 at 60fps with it on the 890M. But yeah, I mean, it does look really good like this. And given the fact that we don't need to use any kind of FSR, it's pretty impressive. And it's not just running at a little over 60fps, we're seeing an average of around 84fps with this game. So yeah, I'm really impressed here with the performance out of this chip with that little bit of an overclock. And of course, taking that TDP up really does help because it can send enough to the GPU and the CPU at the same time to keep those clocks up. It is overkill what I went to in this video, but as you saw, even with Overwatch 2, we were up to 75 watts at 1080 high.
and this really is the first official HX370 mini PC to market. More manufacturers do have them planned. Some will be using faster RAM, some are going to be using slower RAM. Everybody's going to have their own little spin on it, so it's really interesting to see what this thing can do. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Ryzen AI9 HX370, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.